Welcome to Tech, the Earth Science Department. I'm Bruce Harrison, I'm one of the professors in the department. And what I want to do today, instead of just coming in and bleeding on about you know what a wonderful thing it is to study geology or earth sciences or anything like that, what we thought we would do is give you some examples of different things that we uh, use. A lot of these are teaching things we use in the earth sciences department. We have about seven or eight different stations. Uh, uh, Mexico uh, Tech is a really good place for geophysics. This is a Mac. Yeah. Oh, and Mac's really cool. Because they've got a little accelerometer in them, which just measures the change of uh, the movement of it. And someone has developed a program here that takes advantage of this accelerometer, which Mac designed mainly just to see if you drop your laptop. Like if you drop it, it measures in the accelerometer, so that way they can see if it broke because you dropped it or if it broke just because it broke. But um, this person has developed this thing, it's basically like a seismometer, so if you hit this thing, you got to get kind of close, but um, as you, you can, I'll let you guys play around with this, hurt your hand a little bit, but as you bang this table, it shows up on here, and this is basically the same function of a seismometer, it just measures the acceleration of the Earth's surface. Here's some building rocks, and all that. you guys can just build a house or something. And you can kind of take this as being bedrock, which is what most, uh, or bedrock or consolidated sediment, which is what most stuff is built upon. And then you can take this jello here. This is like basin fill. It's sand, very fine grain, not really consolidated. And this basically demonstrates what happens in an earthquake whenever you've got a lot of moisture content in your soil. As you shake something, you can see that these move a little bit, but they stay relatively stationary, where on the jello here you get a lot more movement. And this is exactly what happens in San Francisco. That's why, along with the San Andreas Fault being there, people worry so much about um, earthquakes, because they're just sitting on a bunch of loose sediment. And this is what happens to all the structures. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm in more of a new upcoming field. It's more geobiology or recovery. We're using microbes because uh, realizing more the potential of microbes to actually uh, make minerals, more like bio minerals. And then also you can apply it to more like, geology applications. This is a uh, concretion from Morocco. When you actually have concretions in the field, we're trying to use this type of study to actually apply to these type of deposits to say if microbes were there. And then also, NASA is really interested in it too, like to see for the whole the life on Mars. Uh, we can say the camera, I'm a student from the Cape Cod <laughs> Studies Program here, part which is part of the geology program. So what we study is how caves are formed and then what happens inside the cave. So what's happening in caves is that we have, first we need to have the rock, right? So you have a solid rock like that. And what happens to make this solid rock? So that's one of the things you are trying. Sinkholes. Have you ever heard of sinkholes? Sinkholes. Yeah. So what we do is we we actually try to to reproduce that. We put a little bit of sugar in it, and as you know, if you what happens if you put sugar in water? Yeah. So that's one of the main way that you can form caves. So, so you have the sugar, and then you we put like a cube, we, we fill it with sugar, and then we cover it with sand. So over several weeks, we keep bring water, and then the sugar, the sugar dissolves. So what happened above is that the sand collapses down. It forms what it, what is called a sink. So you can see these black lines are actually um, doing faulty in earthquakes. It made this like glassy substance like shot up into the rock. So it just records the fact that there was an earthquake there. So that's pretty cool. This is from Warwick White, so from um, a volcano there. You can say what you say about it. <laughs> Basically this uh, this is a Pohoi Hoi flow, and it's basically the stuff just sports out across the terrain and it just forms these wrinkles. It's just really, uh, really viscous and it just piles up on top like a film. I injected blue uh, contaminant into this well and this well. All these wells are only screened at the bottom, they're completely sealed at the bottom. And um, you can see the blue contaminant in this one. 
<laughs> all the way out to here. <laughs> in the same time that this one only got there. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, this because is how you measure the sediments. And Antoinette's going to show you the differences. This is a geode. Most of you know what that is. And what this one shows is, at one time, the water was right here, and the rock was positioned like this. And then after time, more water came in through the cracks, etc. But the rock had moved, and now you see a new horizon. Then finally, all the water has evaporated out and formed these voitroidal crystals inside, which are calcites and silicates. <laughs>